Well, when you're old enough, you can see boobs. But right now, just, you know, just Google them, I guess. Oh, hey, buddy, I got to go. <laughs> okay, love you too. So I was my seven-year-old nephew. Guys, Adam Ray here, and I'm fired up because I'm on tour doing stand-up comedy. That's right. Salem, Oregon, thanks for all the giggles and fun last weekend. But we're pressing on to Batavia, Illinois, March 24th through the 26th at the Comedy Vault. Come out and see me. Batavia, Illinois. Batavia, it's where it all began. <laughs> it had a NyQuil dream I had in the fourth grade. And we're keeping the tour moving. Batavia, Illinois, Comedy Vault, March 24th through the 26th. And then Irvine Improv, April 15th through the 17th. In Irvine, California, local, come see me, drive the 30 to 40 minutes, stop off at Disneyland, high five Goofy, chest bump Captain Hook, fucking smack Mickey and his Mickey dick, and just uh, and come out and see me, Irvine Improv, my first week in there, special guest galore. And then the party continues in Austin, Texas, April 22nd and 23rd at the Vulcan Gas Company. Austin, Texas, during Moon Tower Comedy Festival. There's going to be a lot of special guests at these shows as well. Get your tickets for all these shows at adamraycomedy.com. And then, of course, Madison, Wisconsin. Comedy on State, my first time at this club. I've been wanting to go for a while, and the stars finally aligned. April 28th through the 30th at Comedy on State, Madison, Wisconsin. Come out and see me. Bring your cheese. Bring your fucking butts bring put those butts in the seats while you're eating your cheese maybe we'll bring in some seats made of cheese we've got cheese seats for you you fucking i love madison i've been twice you guys are always great crowds come out and see me comedy on state april 28th through the 30th all these tickets at adamraycomedy.com also all my merch at adamraycomedy.com uh tour dates videos albums uh adamraycomedy.com for all that Adam Ray Comedy on Instagram and Twitter Young Rock season 2 is out now uh tonight check it out um uh 8 p.m. I think uh Vince McMahon it's going to be great season 2 uh a lot more exciting stuff coming your way but for now enjoy this brand new episode of the About Last Night podcast with one of my favorite comics on planet Earth, a funny dude, a kind dude, and a sweet fella, Mr. Nick Swartzen. So when, you know, you, you dissect a comedy, you, you fucking can't. You can dissect technical filmmaking, obviously, if you want. Yeah. But in terms of, like, a comedy, you're not wrong for... If something makes you laugh, that's the goal. Yeah. So who the fuck is anybody to go, like, uh, that made you laugh, you're wrong, and you're dumb. What the fuck? Hey, fuck you! You wanna fucking eat me out? You wanna fucking eat me out? That's what I say to their family reunion! Hey, it's Herbert! Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Have you cut out soda? What have you cut out since COVID? Because I uh, got asked that the other day, and I was like, I'm going to ask Nick that. As if it I, was like I, a New Year's resolution reset button. It was like, you beat a pandemic. What are you changing? <laughs> yeah, the really <laughs> long New Year's resolution. Yeah, sorry, that's my um, Yeah, no, I just, uh, I cut out. Well, how do we get into this topic? Should we just start like it's like a, where there's like an intro? I feel like psychologically I need to just go like, bum, bum, hey, bum, bum, yeah. bum. Welcome then, back. Welcome back. Yeah, more people singing. <laughs> okay. I The intro's already happened. Welcome back to the About Last Night podcast with my guest and my friend, truly one of my favorite comics out there and probably yours. A guy who's just celebrated his 26th anniversary of stand-up comedy. Correct. Born and raised in Minnesota. Uh, yes. Fan of the Minnesota Vikings. Right. Fan of most sports, fan of movies and TV. He's been in pretty much all of your favorite shit. Correct. From Grandma's Boy to yeah. Grown Ups all of to it. Blades of Glory to Avatar. Nick Swartzen's Pretend Time to Reno 911. Avatar. To av- <laughs> Avatar. All of them. I've been in everything. You don't know that, but I've been in everything. <laughs> to Avatar, the porno, the anime. I was a baby on MASH. I mean, I've been in everything. Were I've you done. really? Yeah. No, you weren't. Yeah. No, that's I'm like so physical. Gullible. That's impossible. It is. It's actually it's not impossible. But no, I was not a baby on Mash. You were. You did play a crazy David Bowie fan in Almost Famous. I was. That was my first um, movie that I did. Thank you. And yeah, you're welcome. I think so. Um, 
Yeah, it was really cool because it was Cameron Crowe, who I love. Yep. Cameron Crowe is behind like Jerry Maguire. When he was a kid, he wrote Fast Times at Ridgemont High. When he was a kid? When he was in high school. And he's incredible. And one of my favorite movies, if you haven't seen it, listeners, uh, the movie Say Anything mm. is phenomenal. It's one of the best romantic comedies. Iconic scene where John Cusack's character lifts up a boombox yeah. playing In Your Eyes by Peter Gabriel. Iconic scene, but phenomenal movie. Unbelievable. So he, I auditioned for one of the band members, one of the leads, and I was too young. So he was like, I just want to put you in the movie. He's like, I think you're really funny. Wow. So that was an honor just to even have that because he was notorious for putting people in. Like, you can see cameos in his movies from people that, like, was their first break. So it was like really almost cool. a way that uh, in Angels in the Outfield, like Adrian Brody, Matthew McConaughey are just outfielders that maybe have two lines. Yeah, exactly. Cameron Crowe did that for uh, for you. Do you yeah, think for he takes- like a ton of people? It's like weird when you look back. It's like a running thing. You can Google it because I don't want to like be like, yeah, I mean, Abe Lincoln was <laughs> yeah. in fucking Jerry Maguire. Like, I don't know who was in it, but you, like, yeah. there's a lot of people. Who's anyway, that guy in the shower scene with Cuba. <laughs> you yeah. know what's crazy though is that that is your first thing. Like, everyone's got a first. Like that. Like you didn't have a Jack in the Box commercial first. It was that. I had a Barks root beer commercial first. So that's a, it's weird that you said that. Because I remember Harlan just to call back to uh, our pre-pod conversation. I remember Harland telling me he did a Trix commercial way back in the day. Yeah. And he was like, I haven't thought about this since I traced that fucking rabbit. And then we pulled up the commercial, and he was like, watching him watch it was like watching your grandma watch Two Girls, One Cup for the first time. <laughs> he was like, I remember this. You but know? even more disgusted. Yeah. <laughs> Where he actually vomited. He's like, I haven't done this commercial. I remember it was a Twix ad, and I, that's when I went by the name Chicken Wing Charlie. Yeah, that's way back in the day. Oh, everyone's got a Harland. Oh, that fucking bonkers fool. When, when so you first great. meet him. Um, well, wait, just to wrap up the Cameron Crowe thing. Oh, we're done. So he, we didn't. No, we're not fucking done. <laughs> no, please, I did uh, one scene that I improvised cool. as, as a create, like a Bowie fan. So that they had a fake David Bowie run through a hotel, and I just started screaming. But there, I improvised more of a scene, but that all got cut. The only thing that made it was a scream where I scream, That's Bowie! And I didn't know that, but that's the only thing that made the movie. But it made the trailer, so it made it look like Whoa, I, you... I was like I had like a part. So like agents, so were, said... agents were blowing me up. They're like, "Hey, what's up? It's fucking Chicken Wing Charlie." From Saw the trailer, babe. CPT or whatever the fuck yeah. agency fucking bang bang. Yeah, yeah. And we uh, represent Tom Selleck, Alan Alda, we and we're looking at you. We represent Tom Selleck's mailman <laughs> and Alan Alda's um, taxi driver. <laughs> I mean, it was like that type of shit. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, that was the only thing that made it. But it was still really cool to be in the trailer. You have probably the best comedic scream. Has anyone ever said that? About I did. Then I, yeah, I mean, I was very young at the time. I can't scream like that anymore. Yeah, but that like, was like a part of like big bits I had. I had a very piercing high scream. Yeah. One I, of my first big um, impressions was I used to do this is my impression of a girl at her first concert. <laughs> And I would just, all I would do is scream bloody murder for like a minute and then lift my shirt up. That was like the button to it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I mean, I don't know if this is, uh, the last time I saw you do a full hour was right before I think you were going to shoot it in the belly room at the store. Oh, yeah. Pre-COVID. And it was just unbelievable. My fiance and I went because you're one of her favorites and she was just crying and she's like, She's like, we got to go when he tapes it, too. And then I was like, yeah, we'll figure that out. And then, boom, COVID. But you did a bit, a roller coaster bit, I believe. I, or no, it was the first person, and I'm not going to make you do it because I'm sure you'll probably still do it. I think getting, was it the, the uh, first porn of somebody getting cum on a bunch? Was that it? No. I, I, do you know what well, I'm talking there's about? Two, there's two bits you're referencing. Both re- revolve what? around a screaming chunk. Yeah, well, one of them was... um. I was talking about fears. Yes. And my friend's girlfriend, she said her biggest fear was roller coasters. <laughs> right. And I'm like, that's the stupidest fear because, like, spiders can appear at any time. A plane you have to take because you have to go, you get across Active the country. choices. Yeah, but a roller coaster is not going to sneak up on you. <laughs> like, you're not going to go to sleep and then wake up, like, and a thing coming down all sitting on a roller coaster. <laughs> you do the whole waking up in yeah, bed. Yeah, I do a whole bit. Oh. Like some of my bits, if you know my stand up, they're like sketches. It's like a one man yes. show. Like 
I'll even la- <laughs> laugh on stage where I'm like, what? Do- am I doing like a fucking one man show? A mini play? This yeah. is just, I mean, there was one bit I had about going through a fast food drive through and everyone's drunk and yes. you're sober. It's amazing. And you try to get them, f- to, you try to get f- the order in from yes. everyone. And I'm playing like four characters. The best. And I'm like, where the fuck is my Tony award or whatever you win for that? <laughs> yeah. That the was fucking- on Seriously Who Farted? I think so, yeah. yeah. That was the one you did in Austin, I believe, right? Yeah. And then the one you're talking about is <laughs> yeah. is a bit that I thought of when I was opening for a comedian, uh, a friend of mine, David Cross. Mm. And so I opened for faves. him. Yeah, he's great. Is I, that where you get a lot of your st- story? Because he's also great with just like the act outs, the sto- longer jokes. I don't know. Yeah, I okay. mean. But you dig it. Yeah. I mean, I was always, I was like storytelling. Yeah. But he's really good at storytelling. So I was on the road in Houston. And um, I, I remember dr- I was drunk, of course, and I was at the urinal, and I came out, and I was talking to David, and I go, I just thought of a joke. And um, he's like, what? And I go, wouldn't it be funny if you came as much as you peed? <laughs> like, you know when you pee for, like, a lot? Like, I just yeah. peed for, like, a long time, and I was like, what if I that was all, you know, to just come? And he was like, oh, t- you tell that on stage t- tonight. Like, just tell it. And I'm like, uh, all right. And I did it. I was just like, God, what if you came as much as you peed? <laughs> and um, that was it. It was just like a, an observation. I had no sure. structure. Yes. And then I forgot about it. Got laughs, right? In that <laughs> yeah, moment. people yeah. were like, oh, funny. And then 15 years later, this is why I always tell comedians to write ideas down. <laughs> I actually tell everybody, like, everybody should write. I don't care what you do. If you yes. think of a funny idea, just write it down. I Come don't back know. back to it. Yeah, and you can just think about it. Yes. Um, but, um. Yeah, so I found that, and I was like, oh. And then I put it in my act 15 years later, and I was like, I structured it where I'm like, I would close my act with it, and I'm like, hey, um, I, if I can get serious really quick with the crowd, and I'm like, I just, I don't want a lot out of life. I'm really blessed. I thank you, my fan base, everybody. Like, I just, I, I, I have a, a home. I have a roof under my head. I've got a healthy family, and I go, I really just only want, and the crowd's like, oh, what's he doing? And I'm like, I just hope that one day, I think we can all agree, I just hope one day I just, I come as much as I pee. <laughs> I just one time, you know when you pee for like two minutes, yeah. if I could just rock it like a jizz fire hose, just, you know, and I do like this whole thing with it. And um, yeah, it just became like my closing bit from that tour. It's so stupid. Has but... that type of shit always like appealed to you the most? Like when you think of something, something so, yeah, come jokes. Oh. No. What? Like when you think of something so silly and it makes you laugh, are you like, okay, cool, I know I'm gonna take that to the stage, or do you have you always based what you're gonna, um, you know, uh, take a stab at based on like that, like somebody saying to you, like David, like, oh, that was funny, you should say that, or have you been someone that gauges off of reactions from a story you're telling, like in high school, whatever? You're I'll like, gauge stuff off just regaling a story, yeah. and somebody, someone will be like, did you tell? Have you told that on stage? I'm like, no, I just. And but then like, you clock that. You should. And then, so, you know, a lot of this stuff I'll just think of. I mean, I had another joke where it was like, if I'm at a urinal <laughs> and I just, and I'm peeing and I just turn to the guy next to me and be like, hey man, this is all semen. <laughs> and I just look away. And that was like another joke. I don't know. I just think of cum jokes, but, um, but yeah, I'll just think of weird shit. And you know, some stuff, like as you know, some stuff I'm like, oh, I could that would I could pull that off on stage, right. or that could translate, right? You know what I mean? So you know your shit well enough, you know how you can execute it. Yeah, and you, people can see that starting March 17th in Orlando. There's your tour cam. Yeah, Nick Swartz and .net. I've got Orlando, Naples, West Palm, Key West, Denver, Brea, Irvine, Talking Stick in Arizona, Ooh. Brigada, uh, the Wilbur Theater in Boston, Ooh. Foxwoods, Ooh. Mystic Lake in Minneapolis. Ooh. I mean, yeah, I'm coming out You're swinging. You're back, baby. Yeah, it is. Just it, give it, you some, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to be back. It's it's uh it's Help. good it's good for stand up. It's good for you. It's just like I don't know, man. You're uh, it's just the scene. I felt like there was like a a bump up in the scene. You just being around and being in shows. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah it was great to be back. It was great to see everybody. You know, with the new rooms that popped up. I mean, it it was just it was great to be back. I like really missed it and i i had taken a year and a half off yep. completely and then it was nice to just go like oh okay i'm back and 
doing shows, I just got really aggressive with my agent. I'm like, let's just fucking go, dude. What was the biggest thing you missed, and what was the thing you didn't realize you missed, like that first time on stage? I missed... I just had a different attitude. I've always loved it, but I just really... Um, I just missed people and that reaction, you know what I mean, of just... I missed thinking of a joke or something that I think is funny and then going out that night and telling it and having people laugh at that. You know what I mean? So I missed like I missed that. And when I was not doing stand up, I was planning on retiring. I was totally ready to quit acting and stand up everything. I was just done. While you were in Key West? Yeah, I was so fried and I was just like, I don't want to do it anymore. It was just too like I just hit a wall. And all these people when I was in Key West, Florida, that's where I kind of quarantined. Yeah. People would come up to me and be like, Nick Swartzen, can I get a photo or whatever? I'm like, yeah, of course. They're like, what are you doing? And I go, I quit. I think I'm going to retire. And the look on their face was they were so, like, sad. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, like but I don't know. But you're an man. <laughs> you yeah. Can't. You're Abe Lincoln. You're the Nash baby, man. <laughs> but I was like, I just want to quit. You know, I don't know. And they were like, no, you can't. Like, you can't quit. Like, they just couldn't. It was, it was just weird for them to. And what did that feel like? We. Did, I. It made me feel sad. I was like, oh. And then I'm like, yeah. I guess I can. I'm. A, you know, I'm 45 years old. I was like, I can't just quit now. I mean, and then I just kind of got in my head, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna come at it. Was it a coming off your uh, your health scare, and then also just the chill vibe of Key West that made you go, this life is kind of how I want to. Yeah, I just got inundated. I had really, I just, it, it, everything was too much. I'd put too much on myself. Yeah. I put too much pressure, and uh, th that was the thing. So I just, you know, I just needed a break, really, is all I needed. And so I did. Uh, 26 years of stand-up is fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. It's and like. And people, <laughs> like, won't believe me when I'm like, yeah, I'm 45 years old. Like, I'm going to be, the next one is 50, you know what I mean? The next big one. And people are like, what? And I'm like. Yeah, I've been doing this since I was 18 years old. I've been doing, I started doing professional improv when I was 16. Right. So it's like... You started pulling fire alarms when you were 14? Yeah, good God. But, <laughs> you got expelled for that. I yeah. did read that, and I want to bring that up because I did that on the bus a few times and got... It was the first time I had an adult that I didn't know say my full name and curse me out for lifting that emergency exit, that bar oh, on yeah. the bus. Oh, yeah, I know that. And was, Weep. Yeah. And having the bus driver stop, turn around and go, hey, you fucking idiot, don't do that, yeah. Adam Michael Ray. <laughs> and uh, that was a big bummer, but you did it in the school. I did it in school I met many times. I That's the big league. Alarm. I was doing the open mic of fire alarms. You were yeah, at Carnegie Hall. I was headlining. <laughs> I was headlining fire alarms. And especially I had like 2,000 people in my school. So they had to clear out the whole school. <laughs> It was like, uh, I mean, yeah, it was so, not Headlining theaters. Not cool. Was that? Headlining theaters. Yeah, yeah. Theaters. Some totally. What, what, Sold out. Was that just a- Sold out of high school. <laughs> Sold out my high school. Was that just for the uh, the sheer shits and giggles? Like, yeah, I remember- to get high. I was fucking- To get everybody outside. Yeah, well, yeah, I just wanted to go and smoke weed with my friends. And you could get and lost in the- just had 2,000 people involved w with that. Yeah, they can't catch you. No, it was, yeah. They I, could. It, it, they got pretty hip to the fact that it was me. Why, because you Now were, they really know- <laughs> Shit! <laughs> my Can you imagine principles. if you get busted for that? Yeah, I get busted out now. Shot the clip of the podcast, Nicholas. Oh yeah, what's going on, Mister Swartzen? Minnesota. Every teacher with that accent. And then Harlan comes on. What's going on, Principal Piccolo Peterson? <laughs> you gypsy, what are you doing over here? Have you put peanut butter in your ass crack? You will. You will. I did a movie with him, this indie film in southern Indiana. Perfect. And, uh, yeah, it was so fun, though, with Harlan. And we had a trailer. It was really low budget. Our friend Michael Rosenbaum, it's called Back oh, in yeah. the Day. He wrote and directed it. Wow. And so they didn't have any money. We just had one trailer for five actors. Amazing. We just shared a trailer. So it was fine because it was fun. And Harlan was there, and we just sat in this trailer, five dudes. <laughs> and it was just fucking weird. That experience, I feel like, is, uh, I mean, look, you Doing that, and then probably a Sandler movie in Hawaii with the. I've done every yeah, so like done every level of you it. know this movie probably cost maybe eight hundred thousand dollars, and then I've been in movies movies that cost eighty million dollars, and it's like bonkers. But uh, you know, I just want to do what's funny. Like I just want to, you know, if the part's great, I don't care how much the budget. I don't need any anything you know i think i saw you at the improv when you got back from just go with it because we were geeking out about uh you becoming friends with dave matthews oh yeah which oh was, that's right do you remember that yeah that was really fucking cool and you were like 
uh, because he's just one of my faves and you were just giving all these like cool stories of personal accounts hanging with him and I was just like so cool and then you gave a little insight which I don't know how often you actually reflect on it of being a Sandler fan and then getting into that fam the Happy Madison family is really crazy it like, was really weird because there's only a f like few people that weren't in his camp that like came up with him like a Judd or something you know yeah. that like lived with him that made their way into that camp that yeah. were fans and of the appropriate age to be like whoa fucking Billy Madison and now I'm on a plane punching up a movie yeah with him. it was very very weird it was you know when I first met with him yeah. he had seen my stand up and I used to have jokes about my grandma so he saw my special on TV my, when I, I was like 22, 23 years old, mm. my first half hour. And he was in bed with his wife, and he wrote my name down, and he went in, and he was like, who is this dude? And the young people in the office were like, oh, this is Nick Swartzen. He's like, no, just whatever. And he's like, I want to meet that dude. And so my manager called me, and I was like, what the fuck? And so I, he, my manager was like, he has a movie called Grandma's Boy, and he needs someone to rewrite it oh from page one. And so I went in and met with him and uh, I just sat down with him and I'm like, <laughs> and he goes, so, you know, who, who are your influences? Like, who did you watch growing up? And I go, fucking you, <laughs> you and David Spade and Chris Farley and Chris Rock. I mean, all everybody, like everyone, Kevin Nealon. Norm. I mean, yeah, Norm, everyone. And so I was like, my sensibility is built on you. You know what I mean? Like, you guys are part of my foundation creatively. Mm. So that's why, you know, and I'm not a fucking asshole. So he, you know, I didn't have any ego. I just still don't have an ego at all. Like, I don't, I've done crazy shit. I've yeah. met the craziest people. I don't like, go like, uh, like, you meet people and you're like, oh, no, like, they're a fucking asshole. But um, so that's one reason because Adam's like a really down to earth, chill dude. Yeah. But so between that and then also my sensibility being part of his, it just we just clicked, you know, like like the movie click, which is out on DVD. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but it was interesting. Just, you know, what have you learned? Because uh, that guy wears so many hats. Do you try to um, when you get a chance to be around somebody like that? Do you like try to observe or do you innately just pick up shit or do you like you pick it up? And he was like. When he pull you aside and be like, watch this, this is how you get this shot or whatever. Or watch this. <laughs> um, he Yeah, he told me he's like, they love the rewrite of Grandma's Boy, because it was PG thirteen, I made it hard R. So they were like, Oh shit. And then Adam was like, Do you wanna do I have an idea for a movie called Benchwarmers? And then he's like, Do you wanna write it with me? Oh. And I'm like, Yeah. My God. Yeah. And so I did that. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to have you produce it. And then he basically was like, I'm going to show you how to make a movie start to finish. Like, I'll show you, like, from an idea to a, a script to producing a film to, you know what I mean? Like, all these aspects of it. And, you know, people don't realize, like, he works really hard. And it would the, the thing about working with Happy Madison, which I had to learn, was, like, the critics were such fucking assholes. Yeah. And... Like, I just couldn't. And he was like, dude, don't read this shit. Don't pay attention to it. And it was so hard because I was young and I was so excited. You're like, getting a taste of all this exposure. You want to. Yeah. Right? And so he's like, dude, it's it. They just they hate what I do, what my company like. They hate it. He's like, you're just going to just you're going to have to just they're like it. fire alarm headline puller. Dickhead <laughs> Swartz in. Yeah, stars. Exactly. In, yeah. That was in the New York Times <laughs> and Time magazine. That was the cover. I was Time Magazine's <laughs> shit fuck of the year. <laughs> but yeah, it was really hard to like absorb that. But um, he just showed me how to just, he's like, dude, don't even fucking think about it. Even when I read a positive review, he's like, don't even, he's like, don't even read them. Oh man. He's like, even if they're great. Doesn't matter. He goes, that guy, the next movie could be like, yeah, you know what? Fuck Nick or whatever. Oof. So it was interesting. But yeah, he just, he, you know, really believed in me. He always has. Is there, um, I'm surprised you and Aniston didn't win like some comedic duo thing for Just Go With It because you guys had some fucking fire scenes in that movie. Oh, it was a blast. And she, it was funny because I got, that year I got nominated for worst movie, <laughs> worst actor, worst supporting actor, worst screenplay. <laughs> but you won shit fucking the I year. I got nominated four times that year. I got nominated worst movie, worst actor, worst screenplay for Bucky Larson and worst supporting actor for Just Go With It. 
And it was I funny. love Bucky Larson. So I love Bucky I, Larson. Uh, I think it's the most underrated. A thousand percent. We, we got zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's so there was funny. not one reviewer that had the balls to go like, you know what? This yes. is pretty funny. Yes. Because I wrote that with Sandler, Alan Covert, and it was like that cast, everybody was like they wanted to, everybody wanted to be a part of that movie because they were like You don't do what so you guys bonkers. have done and and miss like they're saying that you missed. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just doesn't it make was, sense. It's just a straight up like at that point, I just go, oh, I don't trust any of that. Now you just truly have people saying that stuff that are saying it because they either they feel like they should or they like. No, it's like they feel like it. they feel like they should. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is a softball. And a lot of them, and I know this for a fact, a lot of critics, they won't even watch the movie. They'll watch the trailer and be like, oh, okay, this is fucking oh, stupid. Yeah. You know, yeah. critics have told me that and apologize. Wow. I mean, I had a critic uh, who did that to me from Minnesota, my hometown. And he destroyed Grandma's Boy, and and then he watched it, and he goes, "Oh, this is really funny." He goes, "Just so you know, I I wrote my review from the trailer." If people, and he goes, "I apologize." Oh, good. Well, that's big of him. Well, yeah, it was nice of him. But if, did you if, accept his apology? Because I would have been like, "Oh, too little, too late. Get the hell out of here." We are now lovers. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was a little person? And you said too little, too late. Would that? All right, let's I'd move say on. That twice. Um, if. Uh, if people judge movies just off the trailer, you'd never know how good. Well, air- it's just insane. I mean, the thing about comedy is like you can't. Comedy's so subjective. So even if somebody says to me like, "Oh, what you think of this movie? Do you think that's funny?" Even if I don't, I go, oh, "I don't know. Did you like it?" And they're like, "Yeah, I thought it was really funny." I'm like, "Oh, great." <laughs> then that's all that matters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you know you you dissect a comedy, you you fucking can't. You can dissect technical filmmaking, obviously, if you want. Yeah. But in terms of like a comedy, you're not wrong for if something makes you laugh. That's the goal. Yeah. So who the fuck is anybody to go like, oh, that made you laugh. You're wrong and you're dumb. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, fuck you. You want to fucking eat me out? You want to fucking eat me out? That's what I say to their family reunion. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry you guys had to see that. But no, it's true. I just don't. Ugh. You can't judge comedy. It's you can't. <laughs> is there some? Is there someone uh, who does make you laugh? If you're on set, who, fucking <laughs> who, no, can make you, who makes crazy. you? Who makes you break? You know what I'm saying? Like, were there or is there anyone? Or have you seen too much? You know what I'm saying? Who like when makes I'll go to a, me laugh? For example, when I go to a movie with Harlan, sometimes he's so critical because he just knows every. Like we'll go see Marvel movies and just rip them to shreds especially the last i think it was the end game when they were all there the first 20 minutes every character had a scene where they were like on the edge of a cliff crying and when the hulk was working in verizon harlan goes what the fuck (laughs) right the hulk selling cell phones and he just couldn't but he also he's like i'm too critical because i know how everything's made so if something's off or the shot's bad yeah i have a lot of that okay but i get excited so for instance i'm watching this tv show Uh, it's called white lotus yeah I saw I saw it late. Oh, I just recently saw it. You would be great on that. Maybe season two. And I watched the first episode. I know Mike White, who's a creator, writer, yeah. director. If you haven't seen the show, watch this fucking show. It's crazy. The first episode's very slow, but it's just setting up a whole character, you know, setting up the characters and the world yeah. and everything. And then from there, it just slowly gets bonker nuts. That's my favorite word right now, bonkers. And there's a performance, the resort manager. And I remember watching this guy, and I'm like, who is this? I was so blown away. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. And I, th- I think it says Murray Bartlett. Yes. He's out of uh, Australia. And, you know, so I was like, uh, I mean, everybody's great on the show. Mike White is the creator, and everybody's great. And uh, But this dude, I was like, whoa. And I love doing that. So I DM'd him on Instagram. And I was like, hey, I'm a comic. I'm actor. But a producer and a writer, and I'm going to look out for you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to just make, just, you know, I'm sure the guy's, you know, fine. But I don't know. I just was, like, made sure that he knew I that. But I'm going to jam with that guy. Oh, my God. You what? You, you want to jam with him is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, or just throw him in something. Like, the guy, he's so brilliant. Yeah, he so, was. like, I love, <clears throat> I was laughing my ass up. I, you know, I love <clears throat> seeing stuff like that. But I know what you're saying about, you know, cr- critiquing a movie On set. and being like, ow. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard sometimes. But like on set, like who, like the, the way that people would uh, talk about Farley making people break or that you would see or or Larry David and Curb, like the way uh, um, J.B. Smoove makes him crack. Do you have that ability or are you usually pretty? 
I laugh all the time. Okay, yeah. I'm really bad at when I when it comes to laughing on set. I feel like in Reno, you were probably making everyone break. No, Reno for sure. I ruined a lot of takes. <laughs> But our goal, because Reno 911, the show was all improvised. Oh, so nobody knew what was coming. Yeah. So it was like, especially with my character, I could say anything. So my goal was to say the most insane thing <laughs> and try to break them. Because they're, you know, they're pretty disciplined, yeah. too. And so I, when I would get them, you know, they would be like... And our big thing was we would turn away from the camera or do something. I did that a lot where I was like... <laughs> Like something was yeah, behind, yeah. behind me or something. Uh, is there someone that you've, I don't know, is it? Kid? Sandler always, I always oh, really? break with Sandler. It won't even even need to be anything. Like I'll just, the second they're like action, it'll be like, <clears throat> and then he'll laugh. And then like, he always, he always makes me laugh. Uh, are, do you, you have teachers and friends now that uh, reach out to you still? I'm always curious when you get to a certain level, if that stops, like, is it, does it only happen teachers? to first? Like the first two years, people that like saw you. Like high school teachers have my phone number. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> what the fuck, man. What kind of school Wait, you, were you? <laughs> I wasn't homeschooled. LinkedIn. I don't know. Do they? Fuck. Do people reach out to you, or is that period passed? No, of like, they, no. I've had everything. I'm off Facebook. I just I got off that a long time ago, just because it just got too weird. I mean, like friends from high school would be like, "Hey, what's up, man? Congrats on your success." Um, can I borrow like a can I have like a million dollars? Is that weird? And they're like dead serious. I'm like, no, what is going on? You type on? back ha ha ha, they just frowny face back. You type back gunshot. <laughs> yeah. Um I mean I but, guess yeah, it, yeah. I mean I you know, I'm still friends with a lot of people from I that I grew up with. I feel like now when I'm on Facebook and I post something, it's straight up for my mom and dad to comment or my mom and dad's friends. I just don't need it. If you need me, call me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I don't need to stay in touch with every fucking yeah. person. Also, seeing Zuckerberg that I've ever met. Seeing Zuckerberg on trial, being like, "We only have like four percent of everyone's photos, so just chill out. We don't have all your info." I mean, even four photos. <laughs> I don't even know. Is he on trial right now? He was a little bit ago for I think that for not um, controlling some of the uh, political. Uh, right. Yeah, that got yeah. fucking out of control. Yeah. But um. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. So back to Dave Matthews. Yeah, it was amazing. Like Sandler has such a broad, you know, like he'll be, we'll be doing a movie. And I'm like, who's playing this part? He's like, uh, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> like, yeah, all right. Why not? Vanilla Ice played like Mark Twain in Ridiculous Six, oh, yeah. which is the first movie he did for Netflix, a Western. Yeah. And I was like, all right. So he always has stuff like that. And like Dave Matthews, Dan Patrick. Yeah. Classic. They all became a part of, you know, that, that group. Yeah, Shaq. And so it's hilarious. So, like, have you, Dave uh, Matthews is really funny. He's a great dude, too. Yeah. What did, uh, do these people come in with, like, enough acting chops? Or is Adam kind of being like, look. It depends. Sometimes they don't. I mean, like, sometimes he's like, I mean, now they do. Vanilla Ice has done, you know, Rob, whatever. He, he's done a bunch of parts. And Dave Matthews and, you know, they have all Dan Patrick, like, it's not an actor at all. And he like he's done so many parts now. He's hilarious. He he just that all you have to do is just commit to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter who you are. Just don't try too hard and just commit. Just you know like you're in a safety zone with me and Sandler and the other producers. Yeah. Like you're safe. So like we'll make sure that you're hilarious. You don't have to be hilarious. Like and just go with it. Nicole Kidman was like Oh, well, I said, you know, was that take good, you know, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, it was hilarious. She's like, I don't think I was being like funny. And I'm like, no, that's why. Like you were just, you yeah. played it so straight and normal. Yeah. Like you don't have yeah. to be like wacky yeah. or whatever. And she was really, really funny. Do you have to run, talk about committing. Do you have to run by like the level of bigness that like you're doing with like your German, right? Your guy was German, right? Pretending to be yeah. on the trip. Like, do you got to, do you pull him aside and go, yo, I'm just thinking this. Or does he just at this point go, all right, I know you're going to figure it out, action, and then I'll pull you down or, or pick you up if you need to. He just trusts me. Yeah. But he – that this is how I – this is so weird. I'm at um, a restaurant in Venice, and uh, Venice, California, and my phone rings at Sandler. So I step outside. I'm like, what's up? He goes, hey, what's going on, man? Uh, can you do a German accent? And I go, what do you mean? And he's like, can you, can you do like a German accent? And I'm like – I don't know, like this, like I'll go to the bar and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, yep, 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 I'll call you back. <laughs> and I go, what the fuck? 
That was your audition. So I go back inside, and I'm, I can't remember what I was having dinner with. I'm like, I don't know. They're like, what was that? I'm like, I don't know. And then the next day, he calls me. He goes, hey, what's that, man? Uh, yeah, we're doing a movie. Uh, it's called Just Go With It. And uh, you're playing like a German dude. We're doing a table read at Sony next week or whatever. And I'm like, what? Thank God it was that. Like, we're not. We're doing this Hitler cartoon. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That would be weird. <laughs> But yeah, so I just went in and did a table read at Sony and just Crushed. did that character. And yeah, Aniston was there, everybody. And it was like, yeah, then we just went and made a movie. Have you always been that fearlessness, uh, fearless, though? Because I'm curious, like, even when you said you did improv at 16, like, I remember wanting to do improv in high school and having a few buddies uh, do it. And I was so terrified. I could, I could make a, my buddies laugh and even like a, a, a bigger group, maybe at a, a party or whatever. But improv terrified me. Right. Well, yeah, it was really scary. When I first started, I started in high school, and it was like a high school company, this thing this thing called Comedy Sports. Yes. And um, then they were like, hey, they brought me and my friend Colton Don. Colton was on oh, yeah. Superstore. Oh, yeah, he was my improv teacher at UCB. Yeah, he was Yeah, Amazing. he was my best friend in high school. That's incredible. So um, we got promoted to the uh, – and then another comedian, Andy Ritchie, who passed away, yeah. who was a really good friend – and uh, we went to the professional company. Wow. And we were teenagers, and we were the only kids. You know, there, there might have been one or two more, but we went to the professional league. James Moore was one of them. And, yeah, it was scary as shit. So then when I did stand-up, I was not afraid at all because I'm like, oh, you already know what you're going to say? I'm like, this is fucking easy. Wow. Even though stand-up was still scary because it was just me on stage, right? it wasn't as scary as not having any idea what was going to happen. What a great path to do that. And it was that. awesome because then I had started theater before that, mm. so I had acting and then improv and then with stand up. I just was like, I just went at it full on. Do you uh, do you miss those days? Like just of the early? No. Yeah. <laughs> what a dumb question. <laughs> Sorry, that was a fan. Um, that was a fan question. I just no. I mean, you, you do get nostalgic about stuff like that because there's nothing like. Colton moved to New York first yes. and did improv, and then I slept on his couch. Oh yes, and I didn't have any money at all. We were broke, so there was a Kentucky Fried Chicken. You missed that, yeah. <laughs> but you look back, and but yeah. like I, all I could afford was like KFC, like side dishes. <laughs> Not even a full meal deal. No, so I would. There was a KFC in the Lower East Side at the time, and I would eat like mac and cheese and mashed potatoes. <sighs> you know, I was twenty years old or whatever. Awesome. And then I got this Barks root beer commercial. And I remember all of a sudden I got like all this residual checks and all this money. And I remember being in Colton's studio apartment. It was me, him, Victor Varnado, three people living in a, like this tiny room. And I mean, they had like kind of bedrooms, but not really closets. And I remember getting these residual checks and I just started handing them out. I just gave, I gave like $14,000 to Colton or something like $7,000. Holy shit. Yeah, I had all this money. And I was like, oh my God. And then he was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. This is money that I have never even <laughs> Courtesy of Boggs processed. Yeah, I have never even processed this. Holy, You didn't grow up like that, no? No, fuck no. God. Now, my family like did okay growing up when I was yeah. really young, and then my parents got divorced, bankruptcy. What my age mom did they was divorce? food stamps. What? What age did they di uh, divorce? Um, what age for you? I'm oh, sorry. the perfect age, 13. Yeah, I was <laughs> nine about to be 10. Oh, uh, Okay. That's not too. When you're a teenager, it's just a fucking. It sucks mess. regardless. I have a friend whose folks are splitting now in their fifties, and she's still kind of like, "Fuck." Yeah, it's weird, but you know, I you could see it coming. I wasn't like, "What?" Did you? What? <laughs> <laughs> I saw Mrs. Doubtfire two weeks after, which is a hilarious film if you watch the trailer. But a heavy theme of divorce. Opening scene. Yeah, it's super heavy. Opening scene. Sally Fields like. You cocksucking motherfucker. <laughs> Petting zoos in the house. Get the fuck out. And then Robin's like, well, give me a chance. You know? and, then, uh, and then the movie is like really heavy. And my buddy's dad took us for his birthday. Two weeks, not even, after I've heard my parents have similar fights and call it quits. So I'm sitting there just like fighting back tears being like, I just fucking watched this. I remember my buddy looking at me being like, are you crying? And I was like, it's so funny. <laughs> it's just That's so funny. <laughs> It's so funny. I'm scared. <laughs> I can't say that Harlan pops up in the movie. Hey, what's up? I'm the shape of the padding so bah, bah. I, just, I, said, I said to my dad as a joke a few weeks ago, I go, uh, I go, I remember seeing that right after you mom split up and getting a little angry and obviously saying this is a joke that you didn't dress up like a British maid to see us more. 
Oh, yeah. And I said that like as a joke, and he just goes, yeah, well, you know, I just said times are tough. I go, yeah, no, I was joking. <laughs> I was trying to really bust your balls <laughs> Jesus, about wow, dressing up. Jesus, why did that up. joke not land with him? Yeah, dude. He Then he felt guilty. Yeah, I haven't talked to him since. <sighs> Fuck, man, he did it. <laughs> that was you. Now he's like doing drive-by fruitings or whatever the fuck, trying to make up for it. He's doing. He's got a lobotomy. You know what that just you just reminded me of your. It's and it's. I've told you this before, live man. It's um, in my top two favorite bits of all time. Ooh. Is your cat attack story? I've told you this. Oh right, yeah. I've played your cat attack story for more people than I think I've anything like referred anything like any road trip that's or a car ride that's like 20 minutes or more i'm like yeah listen to this that's and great. you're just Thank going you. and you're just going no you did it with the- <laughs> it's a fucking true story it's, i also it's don't insane. like cats yeah I, I can tolerate them but that story was almost like speaking to me because i yeah. grew up with cats and it's a hundred percent true story you can youtube it for please the listeners. it's unbelievable or you can see it live at nickswartzen.net no i don't tell that story anymore yeah, i was gonna ask will you if people scream out that's a, such a long it's so long okay. i mean i i do stuff with people yell it out yeah but i mean that one's like a really long story but you know i don't know maybe but you can it's just on youtube you can yeah. pull it up you know uh but um when, yeah so cats are insane when that happened were you like oh this is immediately going in the act no that was a story that I would tell people, and they were like, dude, that that didn't really happen. I'm like, no, it did. And I had, like, a couple other jokes about cats, yeah. about how I didn't like them. And I'm like, I'm like a, a dog will at least try to save your life. A cat never will. Yeah. And I do a joke about, like, you know, whatever. Like, if a, burger, a guy, right? if a yeah. guy walks in with a ski mask and a knife, a yeah. dog's going to bark and try to wake you up. A cat's like, is that a ski mask and a knife? Like. Oh, I'm gonna go take a shit in this box. Like I, I'm not even gonna try to stop that. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I tied, and then I was like, oh, and then I tied the cat story into that. And also, like, but again, and this is, you know, I'm a big fan of act outs, and it's like, have you always, when you tell a story, and you probably yes is the answer to this, felt like you can't tell the story unless you like attempt the voice of the person or try to do the noise of the cat in what was happening. I feel like that is the mark of a good storyteller. When you're like, I'm going to paint the picture you as best as You want to paint the picture as best as you can. And, like, there was a story that I told in my last, the half hour I did on Netflix, um, uh, about me shitting my pants. I shit my friend's floor. <laughs> and it was a story I had for a while. And I used to have visuals on stage mm. where I had, um, like, I would do, like, alternative rooms, like, kind of coffee houses. Yeah, yeah. And I would bring this thing up, and I would act it out with this thing, with props. And then... I just threw it away. I never thought about it again. And then when I was doing the special, I was like, how do I tell that story about diarrheaing all over my friend's floor? <laughs> and the dog got blamed and I got away with it. There's so much to the story. And so I just was trying to pick. So I just pieced out acting out all the roles and just making it come alive on the stage without having any props. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I and you just have to spell it out where I would fine tune the details like there's a pillar. I hide behind this trash can. I go into the bathroom and I'm doing like all this stuff running around stage. And it's it's a fucking crazy story. It's really good. But it's true story. Where are you finding your material now? I mean, you know, it's it's in the same vein as a lot of this stuff. But, you know, I've got a lot of new stories and I've got a Sandler thing and um Key you West know, I, I don't do as much. Nah, not really. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't do as much like drinking jokes and like being drunk. So I don't yeah. drink like I used to. Right. Like there was a point where I'm like, how many drinking jokes? But I still like have like new fart jokes and stuff. Yeah, of course. And, yeah, I mean it's all just the same thing. I like I'm. I didn't like turn a corner where I wear a suit on stage and like talk about politics. Please and, don't like, do that. Yeah, no. It's like <laughs> I've seen comics do that. It's pretty funny. Where all of a sudden they're like this dude. Yeah. And it's like, wait, what the fuck is just happening? Just making a choice. Yeah. Are you in, um, those Sandler tours were pretty epic. It had to be a blast. Yeah, they were a blast. It was super fun. Going to do those uh, again? What? Going to do those again or no? Um, Sandler talked about it, yeah. Wow. But yeah, losing Norm was fucking awful. Oh yeah, he was a part of that. He was one of my really close friends. And, uh, you know, it's just still, that's really hard. And uh, nobody knew that he was sick. No, which was insane. And then Louis Anderson was one of my very, very close friends. Jesus. And nobody knew he was sick. He did, they both didn't want to tell anybody or bother anybody. That was their thing. They were like, nah, I just I don't want to bother people. And then at the end of Louis's life, 
he had said, I should have told people. Like, there was a really close-knit group of people that he was like, oh, I should have told. Yeah. Because I, I, I got blindsided. I was called on a Tuesday, and he died, I believe, on a Saturday. And I was, it was just like, wait, what the fuck? And Norm, I didn't know at all. I was in Key West. In my hotel, I woke up from a nap, and my buddy Todd called me, and he goes, Norm MacDonald died. And I was like, what? And I just dropped the phone and just started sobbing immediately. It wasn't even, I just, like, couldn't. Yeah. And I just hung up the phone, and I just, I couldn't deal with it. It, like, fucked me up. Um, cause he was such a, he was such a great guy. Yeah. He's such a unique dude. Did you talk to him often? Oh yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, Norm and I were really close. I mean, had so much fun on tour and, um, I remember one story. <laughs> this is so weird. And we were on tour and Norm was su- super sweet. And, uh, we were backstage at a casino in Connecticut. It's me, Sandler, Spade, Schneider. Mohegan? Um, I might've been Mohegan. Yeah. And me and Norm are in this hallway and then in the dressing room at Sandler Spade and Schneider yeah. and whoever else, two other people. And uh, we're standing there and this guy's walking down the hall towards us. And it was like a security guard, I think. But I couldn't tell. And I go, oh, my God, Norm. And he's like, eh, what? <laughs> and I go, that guy's got a fucking gun. That guy walking towards us has a gun. And Norm goes, eh, what? <laughs> what? A, a gun? And I go, yeah, that guy's got a fucking gun, man. And he goes, ah, no. And he g- runs into Sandler's dressing room. And he goes, ah, there's a guy outside with a gun. Nick has found a guy with a gun. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I run in. And it was the security guard. He was just yeah, walking. Yeah, in. yeah, And I run in. I'm like, no, there's no gun. And Sandler goes, what the fuck? Somebody has a fucking gun? And I'm like, no, 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 they don't. And Norm goes, what? You just said uh, You just said there's a gun. You just said it. <laughs> and I'm like, no. And then Spade's like, what? There's a gun with it? And I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm like, no, it was a joke. I was just fucking with Norm. There's no gun. And Norm goes, what? There's no gun. What? You thought that was funny? You're like, fucking? And I'm like, I don't know. I just want, I, I don't know. And Sandler goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, I don't know. I just, it was just a quick thing. I thought Norm would know that. Yeah. And it was, just, it was so embarrassing. Ah, why is that funny? Sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah, but uh, um, yeah, Norm was hilarious. He's so. Where weird. would he go in the show order, and would people go nuts for him? Because he definitely he wasn't was he... announced. So we would have like cool. him, Tim Meadows, like guys would just um, like pop in. Oh wow! Because we were the main tour, so like those guys couldn't. You do spayed every... me, spayed Rob and Adam. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, people would freak out. So no, Rob would host, and then Norm would go on, and then me. Mm. And then David, or it would go Rob, me, Norm, David. Yeah. But yeah, people would go insane. So fucking good. Yeah. Because he's never, I can't imagine being at those shows and seeing him pop in, where he's already, uh, you know, just touring uh, seldomly, but then just to be at that spot and have him. And that fan base who's already freaking yes. out. I mean, there was, when we did New York, I, I'm trying to think if Norm was there, but like, it was like Rob, God, was it Norm? Either way, like Rock, Chris Rock was like, "Oh, I want to jump on," and I was like, "You're going after me, dude." Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. like one of the only times yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you got, can Sorry. you go after?" Yeah, him? yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, Chris just did like ten minutes. He was hilarious. Um, Norm has always been one of those, and I'm sure you guys had a um, a sports fandom, like a love. He that was you a guys, big, big huge. sports dude. Yeah, he was one of the uh, first guys I feel like that really with this Norm sports show that tried to kind of combine the worlds, um, you know, in a handsome way to where it was like, okay, cool, I think there is a way to – because sports and comedy, I think, has always been such a challenge. You know, yeah. I mean, look at putting, like, Dennis Miller in the booth, and I've long said this, that you and Norm would have been the perfect Monday Night Football, and I still subscribe to that, putting you guys in the booth. And I know that, like, you have to fucking, you know, maybe do two weeks of, uh, I don't know, kid shows just to get the fart and cum jokes out of your brain. No, I mean we're not. We, no, it wouldn't be that. It would just be if Norm showed up. It, I mean, but it like, would have been like always like, is he gonna show up? Like, really? Sometimes he just would be like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am Why I f- have a show? <laughs> Am I far off with that assessment though? That you in the booth would be. It would so- be fun. Yeah, I mean, it, Jay Moore tried to do that years ago. He had a thing called More Sports. Yeah, and that was on ESPN. Right. And he had tried to do it, and that was pretty. That was pretty solid. Why do you think at the end of the day, like when Dennis Miller was in there, I don't remember it. Be, I remember the jokes being 
few and far between because I feel like even at the end of the day, you Dennis just can't, was like, well, that was a way wrong choice. That was the wrong way to go yeah. about it. You don't want to put him on Monday night football. Yeah. Like that's just an institution. Right. And he's like, look at them defenses going in like they got Pol Pot into Korea <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like, what um, fuck? fuck you. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a fine line to, yeah. to do it. Because people at the end of the day take sports very seriously. Yeah, very seriously. But like, you know, Bob Mennery, do you follow him on Instagram? Dear friend. Yeah, Bob's a friend of mine too. Yeah. And the way he did it was really funny. Oh, I mean, yeah. He exploded so quick. Because it was such a, you know, his voice is great, yeah. but his take was just so funny. It was well, just you, like how, you know, you would you would say like a normal person would be like, all right. You know, I don't want to do it. Oh, yes. Reason. Wait, will you pull up real quick? All right, you have the ability to pull up YouTube stuff, right? Uh, do you have the ability to YouTube? <laughs> Maybe. It's like an old Will Ferrell character. <laughs> yeah, when the hot tub with the, the beard. The hot tub <laughs> at the Wesley Arms I would hotel. not be able to not break. I think in that sketch, there's certain. Oh, I would be, and people always would criticize Jimmy Fallon, like, "Oh, he laughed all the time." I'm like, "Fucking yeah, yeah, dude, I would lose my mind." I had to be, I had they had to change shots, and I got thrown off the set of Grandma's Boy several times, and I was one of the writers of the fucking thing, and I knew what the line was gonna be, and I would still laugh. The guy who was like the robot guy, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would laugh every single line. <laughs> When he was like, so, adios, turd nuggets. So good. I would be like, yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, cut. He was the perfect uh, casting choice, but also like did it in such a way where you're like, oh, that's a guy that truly I believe yeah, he thinks he's a robot. He came into the audition and he was way too old for the part. And we were like, nope, he's just too good. Um, I've got a really funny Dave Matthews story. I don't know Please. if I told you it. No, go for it. Did I tell you the karaoke story with Dave? No. And Dan Patrick? No. So we're in Hawaii filming Just Go With It. Dan Patrick calls me up. He goes, hey, do you shoot tomorrow? And I go, no. And he goes, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, do you want to go uh, out drinking? And I'm like, yeah. So he's like, who else can we get? He goes, does Dave shoot tomorrow? And I go, I don't know. So I hit up Dave. I'm like, do you want to go out drinking with me and Dan Patrick? And he's like, yeah. So we go out drinking, three of us, and we have a driver and everything. And so we go, and it's, it's not a big night life. It's not crazy in Maui, you know? It's yeah. like pretty chill. Yeah. So we find a karaoke bar, and we're already drunk now. We have been bar hopping. We go to this karaoke bar, <laughs> and uh, Dan runs up to the bar, and he's like, hey, can I get uh, shots and blah, 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 cocktails? Nice. So we go up. Then Dan just runs up on stage. Dude, the guy's running the karaoke. He's like, hey, blah, blah. we don't know what he's, he's doing. He's like, hey, do you know den in it den in it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we don't know what he's doing. Yeah. So Dave goes, what's he doing? I'm like, I don't know. And Dave doesn't even really know Dan that well. And so- Fast friends though? What? Fast friends? I guess. Yeah. He didn't have a choice. <laughs> so he, Dan Patrick grabs the mic and he goes, hey, what's up everybody? Not a huge crowd, but like 30, 40 people. Yeah. And he goes, we've got a celebrity uh, here oh, who wants to sing. And I look at Dave and Dave goes, is he talking about me or you? And I go- <laughs> Pretty sure it's you. <laughs> Pretty sure it's you. Which and, one of us um, will crash? Let's so he here. goes, so Dan Patrick goes, you guys, from the show Friends, David Schwimmer, and points at Dave Matthews. And Dave's like, <laughs> he goes, get up here, Dave. And the crowd's like, yay, David Schwimmer. They think it's fucking David Schwimmer. Wait, wait, wait. No, yeah, Patrick doesn't, he's not so fucked up that he thinks Dave Matthews no, is now Schwimmer. No, he's fucking with yeah. Dave. Okay. So, Setting him so, up to, to no, karaoke. of course he knows it's fucking Dave Not, Matthews. <laughs> Are you fucking dumb? I don't know how drunk he, he just gets. said, call <laughs> Dave. Okay. No, he goes, David Schwimmer. Not only setting him up for failure because he's pimping him out to karaoke, but now karaoke as an impression. Yeah, so the crowd's like, yay. And he goes, get up here, Dave. And Dave turns to me and he's like, I'm not fucking going up there. He's like, what the fuck? Do I have to sing like And Schwimmer? he goes, hey, get up here. And then Dave's not going up. So Dan Patrick takes the mic and the mic stand, oh, God. carries it into the back of the room, oh. and puts it in front of Dave Matthews. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So Dave Matthews finally like, oh, fucking. All right, fine. Carries the microphone back up on stage. <laughs> and he goes, what song is it? And the guy who runs it's like, um, he picked Baby Got Back. Oh, So my. fucking Dave Matthews, miserable, is sitting there and he's like, Baby got back and just talks the song, no effort at all into it. He's just so annoyed. <laughs> and Dan Patrick's hitting me. He's like, and I'm like, 
dude, this is weird. Yeah. And the Bad crowd jokes. doesn't know. They kind of realize it's not David Schwimmer. It was just weird. By the way, for sure, there's a few vacationers that left that night being like, they get back to the airport. How was your vacay? Saw Schwimmer just fucking eat shit at karaoke. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I mean, there was a lot of reactions, I'm sure. Like, <laughs> I saw Dave Matthews, who I guess is also David Schwimmer. <laughs> was Dave Matthews on Friends? Like, people were just probably like, what is going on? And then TMZ leaked the story. Of oh. Dave Matthews singing karaoke. Oh my! Did they mention Schwimmer in the TMZ version? Great question. I don't remember. Great question. Yeah, but I don't know. There's oh. a video on YouTube of uh, Bon Jovi at a wedding. I don't know what his real name is. Uh, bon Jovi at a wedding. Does he have Maybe. a real name? Got Isn't a name, it John, right? John Bon Jovi? John Bon Jovi. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Good call, dude. Who just Nick, calls him Nick bon knows Jovi. his trivia. Uh, that's not so even a tough one. <laughs> John Bon Jovi. I didn't know. I'm a retard. No, we'll pray uh, for you. We'll pray there's for a, you. There's okay. a video of him at Everybody a wedding. out there, if you could say one for <laughs> And they start playing his song, and they hand him a microphone to start singing it. Like, he clearly does not know this is about to happen. And at first, he's like, nah, nah, nah. And then they, like, shove the microphone in his face. And then he's a nice guy, so he does it and sings a song. But yeah. it's so uncomfortable looking. Oh, man. But he did it, though? That's he cool. He did it, yeah. I think that would be fun. What is Sting's real name? Gary. <laughs> Scary Sting. Stingman. Stingman. Yeah. I think that's right. That was who was supposed to be on The King and the Sting. It was actually, <laughs> the, it was supposed to be Theo and, and Sting. Sting. And they got fucking Shab. Dude, they have that Tiny Desk concert with Sting and. Uh... Great story, are you? Yeah. Um, is. Um... God. Wow. All right. I'm nervous. Uh, should be Sting there, was mentioned. Everybody should be nervous. He has three three hundred million dollars. He's a there could guy. also be another takeaway from that story where someone goes, "So Dave Matthews is going around to karaoke bars pretending to be David Schwimmer, <laughs> right? To get signed because apparently Schwimmer is a god in the karaoke community. Matthews is Dave Matthews, but got moved up the list because they thought he was Schwimmer. Yeah, there's a lot of scenarios. How about you, karaoke? Yeah, I'll do it. I'm one of the like. Didn't you rip up tip- Barney's back in the day? I've done some. I've made some moves. <laughs> um, shaggy. That's yeah, the there was one time when um, I fell off the stage. Not even a tall stage. It's like half a foot, and I tripped and fell into the curtain and um, <laughs> broke my knee. And I had to go to the hospital. No, sorry. Um, yeah, and then falling into that a was curtain the same is- thing. My friend fell into the same curtain, like. Um, it was a, it's a deadly curtain. The but curtain is, there's no good way to fall into a curtain. No, it was super embarrassing. Because <laughs> you grab part care. of it on the way down. Yeah, it was. I was really drunk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as anybody, like I I do karaoke when I'm like hammered. Yes, sober karaoke is it's doable, but it's just not as exciting. Who's it fun for? No, I don't know. Who wants to hear someone try to hit all the notes? But I I mean I remember I've I've tried to sing the song. One of my worst attempts was um I remember you by Skid Row. Oh my god. So if you don't know it just look it up. It's it's an almost an impossible song and it just keeps going like <laughs> remember yesterday we're walking hand in hand. Like I still can't do that. I'm wow. stone sober. But like when you attempt a song, I don't know if anybody out there obviously is when you attempt a karaoke song and you have that drunk courage of like <laughs> I got this. <Yeah. laughs> I got it. And it, you learn, you go really quickly, you're like, oh, no, I don't have this. And then the crowd's like, ugh, bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll karaoke sometimes. But another uh, Hawaii story that I love was we went out to dinner, um, cast dinner. It was me, Dave, um, Jen, uh, Adam, and uh, there, there, there's a handful of people. There was like 15, 20 of awesome. us. Awesome. And Woody Harrelson crashed it. So he's friends with people. And, there for uh, like what three months? Yeah, Fuck. but what he lives on Maui. Yeah, so we're <laughs> sitting. It's a family's re- family restaurant called Mama's Fish House. Really great restaurant, phenomenal. If you're ever on Maui, it's famous. And we're sitting there, and families and kids packed restaurant. <laughs> and Woody Harrelson, classic, just lights up a fucking joint, just fires it up, middle of the restaurant, and then everyone's like. <laughs> 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 and uh, Jennifer Anderson goes, um, Woody, Woody, what are you doing? And he's like, spoke, spoke at the joint. She's like, oh, it's a, f- a family restaurant. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, Sam is here. I'm here. Like, that's going to be in the paper. Like, that's going to be like a thing. And he's like, oh, right, right, right. right. 
and he like puts it out <laughs> but it's just so funny it's just so so casual it's like such a classic he's such a chill dude yeah obviously. but he just didn't non-confrontational get, like, being no, like hey, yeah just like what you i'm gonna just... do this and tell yeah, you no, yeah it's cool yeah it's cool man <laughs> no kids have complained have they jennifer Aniston rips drugs at a family restaurant like even though like Maybe she's like there's a kid over there he's like oh does he want some yeah no, i no, mean no, like that's... dude um but yeah that was classic Woody. um would you ever uh you love acting, right? Yeah, it's great. Would you, if they asked you to like, hey, would you get in crazy shape to play this athlete that you loved? Would you do that? Or is that type of stuff just not even in your realm of He's in desire? pretty good shape. I mean, would I play Tom Brady? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Would. They've asked. Um, no. I don't know. <laughs> no. I'm trying to think of an athlete. That I I don't know no like the same way Tony Danza played like a garbage man field goal kicker like Philadelphia kicker in some like Disney movie like something like that maybe a baseball player yeah I don't know I I it would depend but no no what if they I did, what if they did no, the Kirby no. Puckett story and you could no. play like Kirby's best friend why but why would I have to get in the shape for that <laughs> that doesn't even make sense it's a, cause you Kirby, know because every athlete all their friends are ripped there's no way they just <laughs> How about just would get you, completely about, out of shape about, so they don't have to be a professional. How about athlete. would you play one of the guys that Frank Thomas approaches in a eugenics commercial? That's those <laughs> commercials are so funny. Good God. Um no, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, I you know, I would get into shape maybe. I don't know to play like maybe a superhero or Ooh, Marvel, I don't know. Okay. Like in Zohan, like you were probably around Adam when he was doing all that. He what? like he got crazy. mad at me cuz I didn't get into shape. And I'm like you're supposed to be like this Rambo superhero. He had like a Navy SEAL training him. Wow. And he's like, what the fuck? I thought you would do the same thing. I'm like, I play like a schlubby guy who just eats all the time, like in all the scenes. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, right. I'm like, yeah, what is going on? Don't you fuck the mom in that too? No, he fucks my mom. He fucks your mom. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I'm like, don't yes. you, like, don't you fuck your mom in that movie? <laughs> it's not out of the question. Yeah. That, I mean, I do, I've done every other bonkers weird thing. <laughs> But there's times, like, I did this movie, A Haunted House, with Marlon Wayans. Mm. And Marlon was like, hey, I want to add something. And I'm like, what? And he goes, what if you're naked in this scene? And I'm like, what? And he's like, I think it'd be really funny, that final scene through night vision, and you're just kind of, like, crouching around trying to find my character naked. Mm. And I'm like, am I showing, like, dick balls? Or, like, are we going dick balls? And he's like, no, no, no. Just like, we'll, we'll shoot it to where it, like, you don't see. Whatever. And I was like, yeah. All right, I will. Because I thought about it, and I'm like, it would be really, really funny if yeah. I was naked. Yes. Like, I wouldn't do it if it was just for shock value. Right, But he was right. Yeah. He, it was, would be really. So I did it. But then I'm like, oh, I didn't. I wasn't ready for that, like, physically. Like, luckily, it's like, I'm not that out of shape, but. It's also it, way funnier if you're out of shape. Yeah, I mean, we're it in does. good shape. No one wants to see that. No yeah, I did that movie, The Wrong either. Missy, and out of right out of Funny. the holidays, and I was I had all this holiday weight and like just, <laughs> and I'm like, fuck it, I'm just gonna go for just, it. Just I'm just gonna wear it. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna get into any shape at all. And then I didn't realize that I had my shirt off. It was like disgusting. I, like I almost threw up when I was watching <laughs> because it was just like, just like not even like oh like I was it was just like. Like if my body could talk. Hey, what is your body do? Look at you, you fucking snowman made out of crispy cream Kringles. Have you been to one of his barbecues up at his house? I haven't, thank God. Yeah, I won't. I now I definitely won't. What does he do? Does he cook? No, he just um every uh I think it was maybe no. of July. Hey, right, come over. He buys Ikea meatballs. See the house the puppy dog pals built, Help huh? me build the Swedish <laughs> fuck suck swing set I got at Ikea. What was the first thing you bought with your uh, uh, Barg's root beer money, I guess? Or how about this? Your first, like, comedy money. My first comedy money. A car, a fucking... I fucking bought... Ken um, Herbeck jersey? Uh, no, I bought a crossbow. <laughs> no, I didn't buy a crossbow. Um, I couldn't believe... Like, when I first got a, uh, I mean, the first big check I got, um, oh, it was from Barks Root Beer. <laughs> this was the first time when I started stand-up and I did a comedy festival, mm. 
and they cast me off of it. Because when you're when you're starting out doing stand up, I was at, hosting at clubs, yeah, and I was making two hundred dollars a week. Fuck. And then I got this Bark Stripper commercial, and I got like a good, like decent money, but it was very like, you know, basement, just like yeah, money. It was, I wasn't scale. a name or anything yeah. scale. And so it was a couple hundred bucks, you know, or whatever it was at the time. Free bargs? No. Ugh. So then I got a residual check. I didn't know what that is. So just in case people don't know, residual check is just royalties you get from how much they air something. Yeah. So how much they aired the commercial, you would get royalties from yeah. it. So I got a, two checks, and um, I was like, oh, my God. And one was for 120 and the other one was for $120. And I'm like, I didn't even do anything. And I got this. And my mom goes, no, that's for $1,200. So it was two checks for $1,200. So it was $2,400. My mind fucking went insane. Me and my mom got so much coke. <laughs> it was fucking insane. We just fucking ugh, just zapped it right there. Just fucking cloud nine fucking machetes. We just fucking went out and we're like, let's fucking dance. Um, That's bonding right there. That truly yeah. is. No, I think I, I don't know. I didn't buy anything crazy. Hell yeah. And then after that, the first like, I invested in a car, Dodge Shadow, and so I could do the road doing stand up, and it broke down all the time. Fuck, what a cool name for a car! You never heard of Dodge Shadow? No. Oh, it was the you, shit, man. You it's, get it had that a sunroof? It was, it was insane. Do you? I think you get a Dodge Shadow just so you can say you drive a Dodge Shadow. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the ba commercial? Basically, it's a, you have it's to, a really you have to say it, that's one thing. It's a really cool guy who they pan back, and he's just in the middle of a giant you know fuck fest yeah and he's exactly. it's the whole the whole vo is on him and you pull back and he's just like you get a dodge shadow so you can say you drive a dodge shadow yes hi i'm dodge shadow i'm don shadow, I'm don shadow but i drive a dodge shadow do you like driving shadows <laughs> with moms on coke <laughs> each dodge shadow comes with a mom on coke yeah. and yes i'm inside someone right now <laughs> and they're inside of a dodge shadow um, yeah, but luckily, like I, that car did get me through a lot of road gigs. Did you? I mean, that's when you know people yeah, don't realize before YouTube, before anything, you actually had to drive, yeah. to, like to get seen by anybody. Like you didn't have a YouTube channel, a gram, a TikTok, whatever the fuck it is. You didn't have anything. You just had to. You just had to drive to a show and just have people spread the word. That they <laughs> fucking saw you. Hey, I saw this guy. Hey, it was pretty slick. Well, tell the tell the next guy you know, and you see. <laughs> yeah. Tell another man. Uh, God. Would you drive cross country? Oh yeah, I drove. What the fuck? Yeah, I drove cross country, and finally it died in uh, San Francisco at the punchline. Do you like flying? I don't mind it. I used to hate it. Yeah. But like now, I I used to have really bad anxiety. Yeah. I would stop planes. Like I would I would have. You're that attacks. guy. I would have panic attacks before, like, I knew about prescription meds and, like, if taking Xanax or something for a flight. So I, if I was hungover and I had that hangover anxiety, I would have trouble breathing and I would freak out. Especially if it was a small, like, commuter flight. I would be like, nope. And I would be like, tarmac. I would, like, go back Holy to the gate. Holy shit. Yeah. And they'd have to I go back. I did that a couple times. Yeah, they would go back. Yeah, I've, I've felt that way a few times just when people have been – like, I guess, doing what you're doing, or they say things like, oh, I got a bad feeling, and I'm like, okay, we, hey, can we go? This right. guy is spreading the, spreading the panic. The, yeah, or spreading somebody the panic. just goes, oh, God, I can't, I can't breathe, right? <laughs> <laughs> just even something like that. Can you like, breathe? Can you? <sighs> uh, no, I mean, I can kind of breathe. <laughs> but, um, yeah, once I would get something in my head, like if I had a window seat, yeah, and, um, like, like people, like somebody, like on the aisle, would be like, "Hey, let me know if you need to like get out." And I'll, you know what I mean. If like you freak out or panic or anything, or you need like you feel like you're like pressed against the window, yeah, or something like that. Like, yeah. oh, if you need to get out, just let me know. And I'm like, if I need to get out, <laughs> like, am I gonna need to get out? I, like, and then I would panic, and then I would be like, I don't know. I just, I had a yeah a couple times, and I'd call my agent. I'd be like, I can't go. And he'd be like, dude, what are you talking about? Oh like on a God. commuter flight to like a college or something, if I had to fly in the small, tiny, the tiny plane. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, terrifying. 
It's not worth it. Terrifying. That's why John Madden just took that tour bus around because he was afraid of flying. Yeah, I know. That's <sighs> so insane. Cool. I did a tour bus on my last big, big tour. I did 55 cities. Wow. And I, I'm not going to do that again, but <laughs> it was interesting to do a bus. Yeah. But it just, it's a lot. Of, that's like anxiety, too. Even though you can, like, get out, pull over. I mean, it's not easy to pull over. It's a fucking big, big <laughs> bus. But it's still, like, you can, but, like, trying to sleep on a bus and, you know like poor tracy morgan and like that whole thing yeah i mean like i thought of i t did that tour before he did that that happened to him but like he you know when you're sleeping and it's the middle of the night you don't know what the fuck's gonna happen you're just uh, putting all yeah. your eggs and the that, driver not going bonk they're falling asleep yeah just fall even though like that's their job i mean they're all my uh driver greg he would he drank like a 12 pack of diet coke to stay um, up. a day yeah, wow. he was just filled right, with so no problems and there, chain yeah. smoking. Good, that's fine. That's what you want. Yeah, it was great. You're like, so you're alert, Greg? Yeah, great. Like, yeah, salt and grave, like ponytail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this guy. Like, I'll die on this bus. Yeah, he's he's not afraid. Well, actually, he is, af he is afraid to die because <laughs> we didn't die, but yeah. Uh, I could see you playing um, in a movie. Bus driver. Or a flight attendant. I've had some flight attendants do the, like, announcements and make a bit out of it to where i'm just like is this a character from nick swartzen's pretend time <laughs> yeah that you know what i'm saying good. yeah have you ever been on a plane where that's happened we get the where real... i became a flight attendant <laughs> <laughs> have you ever fallen asleep on a plane and woken up and you're the flight attendant <laughs> no that's never happened no, have you have you been on a plane where you get the really animated yeah, totally. Yeah, that wants to either sing a song or more... make bits out of the... Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, it doesn't happen as much as you would think it would. Yeah. Just the monotony of doing that all the time, you would think somebody would throw in just to switch it up, just some wackiness. Yeah. But, yeah, I've been on it. It's fun. It makes it lighter. It makes it a little bit lighter. Yeah, I had... Um, I, I always cheer... I like to clap. Like I just clapped for my pilot on my last flight. Yeah. He's like, hey, guys, we're going to experience some turbulence. Just, uh... And he's, like, addressing the whole planet. He's like, just hang in there. He came know? out yeah. to address, yeah. And he's like, you know, but we'll, we'll get you there. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And then I started, and other people are like, oh, oh shit. shit, should we clap? Yeah, we should clap, right? Well, it's a big deal when the pilot comes out of the cockpit. I thought it was cool as shit. Like, that's, it's almost like Oz coming up from behind the curtain to be like, hey. It's not at all, because that's not real, Adam. <laughs> Oz. God. Where the lion got his doing, confidence. He's not doing well <laughs> mentally. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to close this out with a 10-questionnaire uh, inside the actor studio. Get to mm -hmm. know Nick Swartzen. R.I.P. James Lipton, the host of that show. Rest in peace, James. You know that guy died? <laughs> yes, Ari. He died. Spoiler alert, Ari, yeah. Damn. And, um... And Dave Matthews is not Dave Schwimmer. He's Kaiser Shose. Um, <laughs> Shose. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get to know you with the 10 questions that uh, Lipton closed uh, his show out inside the actor's studio. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I'm here with Nick Schwartzen. Nick, what is your favorite word? Viking. What is your least favorite word? Packers. What turns you on? Vikings versus the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> bam, 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 bam. What turns you off? Seahawks. <laughs> I'm kidding, James. Do you have a different answer? <laughs> um, <laughs> diarrhea. In what way? <laughs> if it's on my face. Big turn off. Big turn off. What is your favorite curse word? Chicken sandwiches. <laughs> what, what sound and noise do you love? <laughs> That's the number one. What sound and noise do you hate? What? <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Mm, that's a good one. 
Take your time. I'd like to be... Hmm. I'd like to be a fire truck. <laughs> what color? Hot pink. Hot pink fire truck. Would you have a theme song when you drove down the street? Yeah. What would that theme song be? <laughs> and people know that help was on the way. Yep, somebody would help. What profession would you not like to do, Nick Swartzen? Oh, Harlan Williams' agent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's that's my name? What are you saying? He hooked me up with Ikea. <laughs> if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say at the pearly gates? <laughs> I was going to say something, and I'm not going to say it. Oh. Um, say it. It's a safe space. Say it. No. Um, <laughs> you're late. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. Well done. So I almost died. Glad yeah. you didn't. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't either. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for Nick being Swartz here. Net, net for any dates you want to come see me. Who Tell took me... .com? Uh -huh. Sorry to interrupt. Who Cr took NickSwartzen.com? I don't know. Somebody took it. I did, yeah. And then they were like, do you want to get it back? And I'm like, no, I'm just going to .net it. So, <laughs> I don't know. It still works. I, I, I should have gotten .org where people are like, oh, <laughs> wow, this is. They do. Or .gov. People do respond like that to the .org. Yeah, dot gov. Would dot be net. Sweet. They go. The movie with Sandra Bullock. And they go. No, no, no. The webs. <laughs> yeah. the website, man. Uh, I want to say this uh, before we leave. Uh, I love you. You've always been kind to not only me but to everybody. Nobody has a bad Nick Swartzen story. Um, it's uh, it's cool to get to meet people that you were fans well uh, fans of, and then become homies with them, and for them to just uh, be as gracious and cool and kind and. Uh, and you're still doing it and at a high level and it's inspiring and you don't even know it. So I don't know if that's Thanks, like, man. Yeah, truly. Very cool. Thank you, Adam. I am a fan of yours and I'm glad you are my friend. And I feel like you're reading off a prompter. <laughs> no, I'm not at all. And also, I, <laughs> I'd i like to say that... Um, no, you're the best and I'm glad no. you're uh, back into stand-up. No, you're the best. But uh, yeah, I'm glad to be back doing stand-up. And uh, we'll do shows around L.A. like we normally do. I can't wait. I'm probably going to uh, uh, try to get down to uh, AZ when you're at the Talking Stick and just go to that. Um, yeah, come a, hang it's out. A, it's a great venue. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah. Nick Swartzen, thanks, buddy. Thank you. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of... Uh, stuff to uh to think about and chew on huh because that's what life's all about chewing on the good stuff nobody said that maybe denzel did maybe tom hanks did maybe they said it together in philadelphia the point is click subscribe right here on the aln logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops highlights animations clips it's all here for you baby i'll see you next time well i don't know how to blink